then. Time for a video two, I think. I've just walked from the cottages up, up the river there, along the bank. Straight along there we've got St John the Baptist Church. Look. This could be video three. Yeah, I've got a feeling this is video three. So I've come all the way along the bank. Up the top of that hill there, the, the other side of the hedge, is a, that's the, it's the lane that leads you back into the village if you walk that way. Um, here we've got an old bunker, painted white on one side as a warning to shipping. They could always be used again, they made them to last, look at that. Made them to last. And here we go, carrying on along the River Parrot again. Over there is the Barrage balloon hold, hanger from the Second World War. They kept, them, hang, they kept the balloons inflated in there, you see. Because they had to get the gas from Bristol. So they kept the balloons inflated inside those tall hangers. I think there was more than one around here, but that's the only one remaining. And then the men would bring the, the air balloons out into these fields <sighs> where they, di they did experiments with them. They, they actually had men in planes driving into the barrage balloons to see if they worked. Or uh, I think they were manned planes. <laughs> Sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? They did something like that though. And somewhere as well, over these hams, these wetlands, or whatever you want to call them, um, a World War II aircraft, they found it. I don't, I think the people might have died in it, but they found it um, in the 80s. I think it was in the 80s or 90s they found it. And there's... That's all written down as well and recorded, by the way. They found it around here somewhere. I can, they, they found a few, actually. Uh, they found a few planes that had um, come down. I don't know if they were English. I, I got a feeling the one they found here was an English one. It's funny. About two years ago, I went to Wells, to St. David's, to see the cathedral, and I stayed there for several days in my camper van. And one day, I was out walking around the coastal pathways, and there was one particular hill or rock or whatever you want to call it standing out, and I thought, oh, I can't remember the names of it now. They all had names. I think I'll go and climb that. It was quite a struggle, and it was quite tall, actually, and and it was quite dangerous what I was doing. Anyway, it wasn't till later on when I got home and I was reading, reading literature and stuff because I didn't see a plaque down in the, on the beach cafe area. I'd never seen no plaque. Uh, but apparently, in the war, several Americans, I think they were, lost their lives when they crashed into that rock in the mist. Remember that? That was a nice walk. The coastal port, Pembrokeshire, the, the coastal path, very, very pretty, but very, very isolated, like now. You think to yourself, where are people? Don't, why don't they come out and walk? You know, not just the weirdos. You know, where are the, where are the people? Where are the people? Do they know something I don't, for example? Am I breathing in radiation as I walk here? Probably. The thing is, I'm full of it anyway, after all the x-rays as a child. <sighs> yeah, where are people? I only met a couple of people last time. One was a proper rambler. He had all the rambling gear and had his map and everything. Uh, I think I met a man and a woman and a dog. Uh, 
hardly anyone. That was a year ago. I'm glad I brought my coat. I'm going to do it up in a minute. I might even put my hat on. I knew it would get cold when we started getting this, started getting up this way. This is where we start doing the, even though Cummage is over there, stones are away. This is where the river bends and we have to do the loops. So I'm not going straight over to Cummage, I've got to do the loops. Uh, and that's the stretch where you feel the most isolated, I think. When you're on the loops. But of course you can, with it not being no cow time. You can actually just walk straight across the fields. If I wanted to, I could just walk straight over there, but I want to do the loops. Because you'd never remember everything the first time. You've got to do it at least twice. Like I said, it's quite a hike, so it's not something I would do. And it's always, I found it windy. <laughs> uh, the wind changed direction, it's coming at me now. I think the tide's. It looks like it's coming in now. We just got up to this gate, I'm turning off to do some photos. Cannington's in front of me. I think, or is that Cannington? That could be Cannington there, actually. Cannington Church, I can see. Or is it there? Let me just zoom in on that church. That might be Fiddington's church though. That might not be Cannington. I think Cannington's further over. Right now, this is this is where you, if you've decided you didn't want to do the loops now, this is where you have to decide. Okay, if you don't want to do the loops, or the weather changes, and you've just done that big stretch, you can go down there. That takes you back by the barrage balloon hangar. But once you start going that way, unless you decide to cross the fields, you are committed to going down that lane, which I want to do. And I might, you might find I come back up that later. I might come back up that later. I haven't decided yet. Right then, over and out. Over and out, everyone. I might decide to come and just check this lane out later. There's my reference point, St John the Baptist at Paula. Right in the distance, keeping an eye on the river, like it has done for centuries. When the sailors saw that tower, they knew they weren't far from home. Or they're not far from port when they saw that tower. Over and out.